Yesterday, we looked at solving equa equations with x's on both sides. No different today, but there is some uh, different things thrown in there. Uh, maybe even yesterday you saw one of these things that I'm going to talk about today. You might have figured out. You might have not. That's okay. Another opportunity to try it out. So, the first thing you might notice is, okay, we got fractions here. Oh my gosh. That's okay. Fractions are numbers too. Don't make fun of them. But the fractions... We do want to deal with them, so we're not having fractions throughout the whole problem. So what you're going to do with the fraction problem, um, or with both fraction problems really, you're going to look at uh, the bottom number. So we're going to just look at the 2, the 4, the 2, and the 4. Okay, conveniently they're all 2's and 4's. What you want to do is take the bottom number that's the largest, okay, which would be 4. 4 is the largest. And multiply 4 to every fraction. So we're going to multiply it to 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 5 halves. When you multiply that 4 to each fraction, or whatever the largest number is in the bottom part of the fraction, when you do that, you are going to conveniently get a whole number or an integer. So in a calculator, you could type in 4 times 5 halves. If you take 4 times 5 halves, put it in a calculator, you are going to get 10. So 5 halves then becomes 10x. If you multiply 3 fourths by 4 in a calculator, you will get 3. And that's going to equal 1 half times 4 is going to equal 2. And 1 fourth times 4 is going to equal 1. So if you do this in whatever problem you're working in, you multiply every fraction by the biggest denominator, then you will get integers. And that's really the first thing you want to do when you solve problems with fractions is try to get rid of those fractions. So now we're down to what we did yesterday. We have x's on both sides. We want to get rid of or um, take an x or take the x's away from one of the sides. And I'm actually going to do that to this side right here. I have two x's on the right hand side and I'm going to say well, I don't want those two x's there anymore. So I am going to take away or tell my piece of paper hey I'm taking away two x's by writing minus two x. And the reason I'm taking away two x's is because then I will have zero x's. So this is going to equal 0x minus 1. So if I take away 2x from this side, just like yesterday, I have to take away the same thing over here. So if I have 10x's on this side, well, now I only have 8x's on this side because I took 2 away. And I'm still adding 3. Notice I only can take x's away from the thing that has x's. Pretty straightforward there. So now my new equation is 8x plus 3 equals, okay, don't forget, if you have a negative, remember, that translates into a subtraction or a, or a subtraction that translates into a negative number. So this is still negative 1. We can't just get rid of that negative symbol. It follows the number that it's next to. So 8 times something plus 3 is negative 1. Well, what plus 3 and I'll do this, because I'm running out of room. I'll say this thing. Something plus 3 equals negative 1. Well, if I start with negative 4, or I start with negative 1, well, I should say, it's negative 4. All right, you can either go backwards from negative 1, 3, or you can say, okay, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Look at a number line, but... However you want to do it, if I start with negative 4 and I add 1, 2, 3, I will get to negative 1. So that means negative 4 has to be equal to this piece right here. Well, that piece was 8x. 
Well, 8 times what is negative 4? x must be equal to negative 2, because 8 times negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, so that's one quirk you're going to see today, and something we're going to talk about next is something you saw yesterday. So this is a fraction. Um, next thing we're going to look at, okay, what happens if I have this number on the outside of the parentheses? And this isn't a new thing we've, but, uh, uh, a new thing in eighth grade, but it is uh, something we might not have worked with before. It's called distribution, and that just means we, I'll write this out, distribution just means multiply. Okay, so multiply 6 by 2x and multiply 6 by 1 multiply 8 by x and multiply 8 by 2. Distribution means multiply to every piece inside of the parentheses. So 6 times 2 is 12. Well, don't forget that x. It still hangs out with the 12, but we're only dealing with 6 times 2. 6 times 1 is 6. And that subtraction symbol still comes down. It doesn't go away. It's still there equals, well, 8 times x. Wait a second, there's no number to multiply it by. Okay, remember that if there is no number in front of x, it's still a 1x. So 8 times 1 is 8, and the x still happens, and then 8 times 2 is 16. So now you're down to what we've been doing this whole time. 2x is on either side, getting rid of an x. I'm going to say, I'm going to get rid of 8x's over here. They're going to go away. Bye. So I have no x's plus 16 equals, well, if I did negative 8 over here, I still have to take away 8 from here. So now, if I take away 8x's from those 12x's, I'm left with 4x's on this side, minus 6. So my new equation becomes 4x minus 6 equals 16. You have to figure out what minus 6 is 16, and then what do you have to put in for x. Okay, So that would be an example with distribution. I won't finish this. You've seen them finish quite a bit. So if there is distribution, and you're still working on yesterday's, or you haven't finished, or maybe you did it wrong, you're like, oh, I didn't do those right. Well, now you have the opportunity to try the distribution correctly and finish those problems. So please finish the worksheet for today and hand it in when you are done. Thank you.